Exhibit A. What, what do you do with this? Allison. What self-serving macho shithead has any use for such an instrument as delicate as this? This is such an insult. <laughs> Well, I hope you all are comfortable. Hope your asses aren't getting too flat. It's good to be back here. I know it's been a long time since I got a chance to come up here and uh, talk to you. It's, I've been a little busy here and there, so finally I made it back. Thanks for showing up. Uh, time around I'm spending a whole weekend with you so we'll try and keep it lively over the next two nights. Um, I want to read you a couple of things to kind of get warmed up. I, I, tr I had a bad problem. I got a lot of bad ones but one of the worst ones is I can't say no. To, like to, oh, it, when any, when, if someone says like, if it's work related or like play related if someone says you want to do a show yes Yes! I, I'll do, I just can't say no. Do you want to do a show in Seattle and then not sleep and like skateboard to Miami and do one the next night? Yes! Yes! And then fly to Uruguay and like go to the store and do a show there? Yes! Yes! I, just, I do all the time. I'm just sucker for work. It's only, you know, back and forth like a maniac on these airplanes, buses, trains, hydrofoils. It's stupid. And, you, you know, you know how, how fucked it is when you when you don't sleep the one night and then you have to do all this shit the next day and somehow you 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 do pull it off but by the end of the day you start you see where Hunter S. Thompson gets off in in, in that Fear and Loathing book like reptiles come out of the carpet <laughs> sleep deprivation has always been a great tool for creativity you get really fucked up you'll be standing holding a drink of something and it just falls right out of your hand <laughs> right when you're in front of someone you have to be really intense around yes i <laughs> yeah i'm on angel dust thank you yeah. <laughs> i spend a lot of time sitting in airports and airplanes and trains and all this stuff uh, on no sleep it's always the no sleep jam and i write in these notebooks whenever i'm in these places i have these notebooks reserved for just this purpose and i wanted to read a couple of things out of them because I figured you all, you all might get a kick out of it. Uh, I don't know, maybe this might not work, but whenever you're in train stations, airports, anything, you've all been to it. And they, they do a lot of announcing over the public address system, you know, please come and pick up your dead child. And, you know, or like, this flight's leaving now. And depending on the, the place, sometimes the acoustics are really bad and you don't know what the fuck they're saying and you can like miss your train because, you know, I'm saying please leave the It's echoing over these ancient, you know, high ceilings. You're like, what? What? And say you're in France trying to get a train to somewhere, you're like, what? Oh, shit. And you go, like, I know any French. Monsieur, um, uh, get whacked over the head with a piece of bread. Ah, sorry. Ah. I mean, you're fucked. And so, sometimes it's fun just to listen to what you think they're saying and write it down. And since... Like one time I swear, I was on a train and I swear I heard the guy say, next stop, Vietnam. I was like, fuck! I knew I should have gotten on this train! I just wanted to go to Poughkeepsie! And imagine getting out of the Mekong Delta. Damn it, I hate when this happens. <laughs> anyway, but now, you know, with, with the microphone being such a big deal and, like, getting on the mic, you know, and all these guys are, you know, when they get, when I get on the mic, you know, all these rap guys are all about getting on the mic. Well, here it is, now do something, and all they sing about is what happens when they're going to get on that mic. When I get on that mic, let 
let me tell you, it's gonna really be, <laughs> it's gonna be something as soon as I get on that mic. All those other guys are just gonna, <laughs> I don't even wanna, <laughs> just, just, when it happens, oh boy, I'll get to it on the next album, but right now, I'm just gonna, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I was always thinking that maybe some of these guys pride themselves in their announcements. If you ever get a chance and get yourself to New York, you'll probably be coming in on train to save a little money. You'll arrive at Penn Station. Some of these guys who do the announcements at Penn Station are unbelievable. They should have records of their own. And I, I'm there all the time because when I'm with a band, I practice in New Jersey, so I'm always going through Penn Station. And there's this one guy, he's been there for years, and at least once every three times I'm in Penn Station, he'll be on the mic. And he's got such style, he's so, you know he's so into it, they probably have to rip him away after his day after shit. And, you know, at the end of some of the messages, when the trains are boarding, they'll say, like, you know, all aboard. And this guy, he goes, you know, the next train uh, leaving uh, to Miami, Florida. Is the Minuteman Express leaving Penn Station all aboard? You're like, he adds this little rockabilly thing to the end. I'm, and like, I walk through this going, yes! Look, you know, and no one gets it. No one. And all these people waiting for trains, they don't see the beauty of this guy's delivery. A few of the cops look, I'm just like, eh, guy. Anyway, I was just thinking you can have some, really have some fun being on the mic and doing these announcements. So I, I, I did one of my own, so I just gotta read it. <laughs> Don't think all those thoughts at once. Just drink the shitty overpriced coffee real slow. Read Rolling Stone magazine seriously like you really care <laughs> about that guy in the Eagles. <laughs> Why slow motion? because this is a three hour and 15 minute layover in Phoenix, Arizona. Time stands still. The man on the intercom has a warm yet, yet crisp timber to his voice. Let me at that mic. Yo, what's up, bitch? Ill money fresh death Miss Master B is in the house and I want you all to know that I'm up in this motherfucker piece. Lee Swanson, step to the white courtesy phone for a message and shit. I'm out of here. That would be something, huh? So many hours before I hit DC, six to seven hours, it's going to be a long day and shit. Uh, and uh, this is the, the eyeball opening early morning flight, which you can never remember. Open wide! Your eyes! Your eyes, you idiot! <laughs> Me and the cab driver both slept all the way to the airport. <laughs> the damage is done. It's almost 8 a.m. I slept three hours. Could you sleep if you played nothing but John Coltrane and the Beastie Boys all night? Is that a combination that's awesome or not? I think it is. Right now, Thin Lizzy is in the headphones. Phil Linet is my Guardo Camino. He wrote songs about doing gigs, rocking, loneliness, fighting, and women, and how much it hurts when they leave. On to Las Vegas. Now in Las Vegas waiting to leave. Looks like it's gonna be a full flight. Great. All the comedians. Everybody on this flight knows each other and they're all talking to each other about how much they lost at Las Vegas. I equate gambling with being an asshole. If you don't have a life, then go to Las Vegas, you dick. I still have a quota left. Ha ha. Sounds like you did better than me. Ha ho. You can smell the denture grip. I'm looking out the window. He's out there somewhere. Wayne Newton. I wonder if he's up yet. 
I wonder how many people on the sled have experienced the magic of the man. There's a street named after him in this town full of desperate shitheads. The woman ahead of me is telling her seatmate about how much she ate. The flight, the flight attendant announced that all three attendants' names are Carol. <laughs> Much laughter and a smattering of applause. Here's something, uh, we'll do a train one. This is a great train one. Now sometimes when you're on the, on the plane or train, it seems like you have bad, you have bad travel karma. You sit down and the noisy, insane kids, sit, they find you and they sit right down. First comes like the dad. I don't know, what happens to people when they get married and have kids? They spread. Like dads, just men, these men just turn into like these kind of dumpy, cowering guys carrying all this like baby equipment. Like baby gear. You know, padding down the aisle of the train, putting down like you know, all these, these boxes of padded shit for these kids. And there comes the big mom with the big hips with the, all the kids and she's stacking them into the roof racks and there's kids all over the place. And you're like, fuck, there's nowhere I can go. And they're already smelling and screaming and teething and pointing at you and trying to grab the tattoos on your arm. And, and you know, you're not, you're, not, you're not into killing babies or anything. You really, you really wish you could have them all ride on the wing. I, I always wanted to see like a nursery for kids in the back. Oh, you have a kid? Get the fuck in that room. It's, it, it, it'd be padded. It'd be just like padded, soundproofed room. And then you wouldn't hear any sound. There'd be no smell, no sound. Okay, five hundred dollars for a round trip ticket to LA to New York. You don't want to hear that. I, I can't even do it. My voice has been just wrecked from too many gigs. They hit that pitch that just makes your teeth rattle, fillings fall out, coffee cup smashed, and they just hit it perfectly every time, like like Ella Fitzgerald breaking glass for Memorex. Like that. And, Somehow the moms, they, they never even flinch. Everyone else around them was like, Ooh. Anyway, here's this uh, quick thing about being in the train stuck in the tunnel on the way to Penn Station. Trapped in a train one to two minutes outside of New York City's Penn Station. Stopped in the tunnel. The speaker in our car is broken. I'm listening being subjected to a spoken word attack by the guy in back. He's telling two girls about how this fucking guy was fucking jerking off in the fucking stall next to me. I mean, he's got his cock in his fucking hand, he's fucking jerking it. Meanwhile, we sit and wait. <laughs> yes, it's funny now, isn't it? I'm glad we can all laugh about it. I figure one thing, um, I figure I owe you all, all of you an apology. If you ever travel abroad, if you're ever abroad travel, I do a little dress thing whenever I'm abroad. Anyway, it's not too much. Kind of comfy. You, sometimes in Europe you get blamed for all the damage Ronald Reagan did to the world. Like, like, like you know him personally. Oh, so how is Ronald Reagan today? Oh, he's fine. He just called. Uh, I was over at the Oval Office this morning. He's like, get the fuck out of here, y'all. You know, you go to England. So where's your, where's your nuclear missile in the van? You want to see it, you fucking punk dick? You know, fuck you. I mean, like you, have, like you have so much to do with it. Oh, it was all my idea. Desert Storm? Yeah, I, I hated sending all those guys over there. I love the suit, so I designed it all myself. Yeah, fuck these guys who are giving you shit, you know? But I do feel I really have to apologize because it is an American phenomenon. I am an American through and through, born and raised in Washington, D.C. I really would like to apologize deeply and most sincerely to all of you for Vanilla Ice. I'm sorry. <laughs> It got out of hand. We didn't think it was gonna happen like this. I'm really sorry. I, I'm sure you've been subjected to it. I...